Tulsa is uh, a first uh, where we built an entire aeroplane uh, from laser sintered powder and there are no fasteners in the entire aeroplane. Most aeroplanes of this class are full of things like this and they're forever getting lost. This is one I picked up on the airfield a few minutes ago. It's fallen out of somebody's aeroplane. This aeroplane doesn't have a single screw or bolt in it. It just clips together uh, and can be designed and sent by uh, electronic means to a manufacturer and they can print out the aeroplane and assemble it in minutes. Because the aircraft has a very high wing loading and therefore flies very fast, we need to give it some help to get into the air. Um, so that's what this contraption is all about. It's actually very simple. It's, it's, it's a large rubber band, essentially, uh, a bungee, that we have to wind up with an electric drill uh, just to give it that impetus to get it into the air. It's an incredibly manoeuvrable aeroplane. It's got small wingspan, which means it's, it can roll and twist and turn in the sky. It's a very agile aeroplane, very fast aeroplane. But then it's modelled on the old Spitfire wing shape, which was known for its agility and, and, and good flying characteristics. This plane is a joy for the pilot to have in his hand. It's an electric powered aer aeroplane, so it's got two LiPo batteries in. Uh, if you're very careful on the throttle, you can get something like 40 minutes flight duration. It has an autopilot on board, so although we're relying on our expert test pilot today, um, actually he is redundant as far as our system is concerned. So you could si simply flick a switch, it would fly, pre-program flight, and then come back to a landing point. So what happens is uh, a machine has a bed of powder uh, with a laser's uh, directed laser fire onto it by our mirrors and where the laser strikes the powder melts and fuses and you draw out a thin layer, 0.1 of a millimetre. You then put another coating of powder in and you draw another layer and you slowly grow the thing up and when it's finished what you're left with looks like a block of blancmange. Uh, it's just slightly solidified powder and you break this cake away and left in the middle is your part. It will be full of powder and you literally knock it out most of it falls out and it leaves exposed this rather interesting and intricate structure which we've got inside here which is a very efficient way of reinforcing the fuselage. So I should have control. Okay and now flick it so as fraction to the right. Hey firm. The great benefit is um, that you can have it as complex as you like. If you look at the inside of this structure, you can see that there is really nicely uh, complicated structural design which makes it very efficient. Uh, you can see on here that there are fixtures which enable the thing to snap together, uh, clips. So this kind of complexity would ordinarily be involved lots of different manufacturing operations and lots of different parts. With laser sintering we make it it's a single piece. This entire aeroplane is made from four pieces. The red wing, the green wing, the nose, the fuselage and then we have an, a separate a fifth tray to carry all the avionics. And that's it. The whole thing goes together. The hinges are made integral with the wings so the flaps come out pre-assembled. As the technology allows us to go to bigger aeroplanes, uh, because they're big, building bigger sintering machines, we can push this technology further. And uh, I think the next step will be to build some bigger wings uh, in nylon uh, with this technology, which will incorporate some of our more advanced thinking on how we can put control surfaces into wings.